Hey everyone, I hope this Erev Shabbos message finds you and your families and your loved ones healthy and safe and well. The Torah tells us at the beginning of this coming week's parsha in Parsha's Noso, Vayedaber Hashem El Moshe Lemor, that Hashem spoke to Moshe Rabbeinu saying, Noso es roish b'nei Gershon, gam heim, levei savosam lemishpechosam, that you shall take a census of the sons of Gershon as well, gam heim, following their father's household according to their families. Now the Meforshim, the commentaries point out that the words gam heim as well, they appear to be redundant. After all, since Hashem had previously instructed Moshe to count the sons of Kehas towards the end of Parshas Bamidbar, we automatically know that now that he's instructing Moshe Rabbeinu to count the sons, the Bnei Gershon, that they too are to be counted as well. So as always, the Torah's perfection and limitless teachings justify the question, what are we being taught from these seemingly superfluous words, which stress that also the sons of Gershon are also to be counted? Rav Moshe Feinstein famously suggested that whereas the sons of Kahas had the privilege of carrying the Holy Aram, they had the privilege of the Zechus to carry the Holy Ark, the sons of Gershon were only in entrusted with carrying the seemingly less significant curtains, the coverings and the screens of the Mishkan. And as such, the Torah here stresses that the sons of Gershon, the Bnei Gershon, are to be counted as well as the sons of Kahas, meaning that they are to be counted together in the same way, for they are equally fulfilling their unique purpose. And that even though carrying the fabric of the Mishkan involved perhaps less fanfare than the carrying of the Holy Ark on the Ark, it was no less crucial in any way, shape, or form. You see, everyone is created differently, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Our strengths and our weaknesses are different from one another, as are our experiences and our struggles, our successes, our triumphs, and as such, our success in life cannot be determined by being compared to those around us. Our only measurement is to determine success as whether we could have done better based on our own potential, whether we have lived up to what it is that we were capable of doing and to spend every single day of our lives trying to achieve and to unlock our greatness. This lesson, it resonates very deeply in the aftermath of a week of extraordinary chaos and bedlam and mayhem. I think Eli Wiesel said it best when he said, wherever men and women are persecuted because of their race, religion, or political views, that place must, at that very moment, become the center of the universe. You see, George Floyd's unconscionable, ruthless, and wrongful death in Minneapolis was yet another painful reminder of how much we have yet to accomplish in the efforts to provide social justice and equality for all. As Jews, we know all too well of the pain of being castigated as the villains of the pariahs of society and the terrible horrors caused by unrelenting hate and anti-Semitism. Injustices around the world and all the more so in our very midst, in our communities, in our country, here in the United States, it demands peaceful, unified protest of the highest order to bring about the change we know we need. We must use the power of our collective and our unified voices to bring about goodness and ethics and morality to this broken world. We must condemn, though, senseless and dangerous rioting and looting, which does nothing but divert attention and distract valuable efforts in the process of bringing about the real and the everlasting change that we so desperately need and so desperately want. Our job is to be proactive, to look for, and to engage the opportunities in real time to be a part of the change we want to see in the world. Like the command to the Bnei Gershon, we can never overlook or, or underestimate what appears to be the small and insignificant things, those actions that end up making all the difference in the world. But sometimes what that means is that we need to find the strength and to find the courage to leave our comfort zones and to do what's unpopular what's nonetheless right, what's moral, what's just. And even if it means you're going to be cast off to the side as a person who does things that maybe is a little bit different than others. 
Take, for example, what took place in 1969 when black citizens were not allowed to swim in community pools alongside white people. So Mr. Rogers, he invited a black police officer on the show of Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, and he asked him to join in and cool his feet in a small plastic pool, breaking a well-known color barrier. And the unbelievable picture that was taken then of the four of their feet in this small plastic pool, a black officer and Mr. Rogers having conversation and dialogue, an unbelievable expression of humility and civility and togetherness and equality. And this conversation that was had in 1969 and animates us now. Or the story of George Thomas Shotgun Shuba. You see, George Shuba, who died in, 19, in 2014, was not so well known. But who was George Shuba? George Shuba was a utility outfielder and he was a left-handed pinch hitter who played seven seasons in Major League Baseball for the Brooklyn Dodgers. His seven seasons included three World Series as well as a World Series championship in 1955. He was the first National League player to hit a pinch hit home run in a World Series game. That's good for those of you who are not only sports fans, but like sports trivia. First National League player to hit a pinch hit home run in a World Series game. But that is not what George Shotgun Shuba is remembered for. What he's remembered for is what's simply known as the handshake. What was the handshake? So on the afternoon of April 18th in 1946, Major League Baseball icon Jackie Robinson, he became the first black player in modern organized baseball when he made his debut with the Dodgers Montreal Royals farm team in their International League opener against the Jersey City Giants at Roosevelt Field. In the third inning, Jackie Robinson gets up to bat and he hits a three-run homer over the left field fence. And when he completed his trip around the bases, so Shuba, the Royals' left fielder and their next batter, he was standing on the on-deck circle and he was contemplating what should be his next move. It was very tense during those times, very tense in those days. The racial segregation which took place, that meant that in this moment, was he going to leave the batter's box and shake the hands and a fist bump and a chest bounce? If there was going to be a congratulatory expression of gratitude after hitting this three-run knocker out of the park, or is he going to now remain segregated and perhaps ignore his new teammate? So what happened was, while he was standing in this batter's box, he contemplated what was going to be his next move. And what happened ultimately was extraordinary. Shuba welcoming, he decided to welcome a smiling Jackie Robinson. And he shook his hand and he went over to him and he celebrated this unbelievable accomplishment. But when he extended his hand, to Jackie Robinson, it was captured in an Associated Press photograph that is endured as a portrait of racial tolerance at Hayomaze. You see, Shuba is often remembered for his symbolic role in breaking down Major League Baseball's tenacious color barrier. The moment was captured in this well-known photograph that was simply dubbed a handshake for the century, and I would say for the ages and for many centuries, for featuring the first interracial handshake if you contemplate what that means, the first interracial handshake in a professional baseball game ever. It's unbelievable. If you think about Mr. Rogers' feet in the pool and Shuba stepping out of the batter's box, the small things that can literally change the world. It's as Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, do not go where the path may lead, but go instead to where there is no path and leave a trail. Friends, we can do better because we can do more. Let's start today and let's change the world together, one small act at a time. From my family to yours, I wish you and your loved ones a healthy, a happy, and a most joyous Shabbos Kodesh.